All right, everybody, welcome to uh, a webinar hosted here by Junk Removal Authority in conjunction with Wisdom Insurance Agency and Spirion. Uh, today is a very important topic, one that many of you are going to be very interested in, uh, probably all of you since you signed up for this uh, webinar, which is around how telematics helps you protect yourself, cut costs, and make more money. Now, one of the things we're talking about with telematics is it's your camera systems, plus there's some really neat additional uh, features on top of that that are super important that we're going to cover throughout this uh, presentation. So uh, today's presenters, uh, number one, to the guy on, on uh, one side of the screen here is Toby Stubbs. Uh, he is the president at Wisdom Insurance Agency. For those of you that have attended Junk Con, uh, you have likely heard him uh, speak. He is an excellent presenter, excellent speaker, but most importantly, he probably writes more insurance policies for any uh, other, for any insurance company for junk removal businesses throughout the country. So he's great to work with. Uh, we've also got uh, Bob Burden. Bob is the Senior Vice President of Sales at Spirion. Spirion is our recommended provider for vehicle cameras and telematics. Uh, later on, we're going to be demoing the, uh, the product uh, that Spirion has from Fleet Locate. And then we've got Jim Cronenberger. Jim is the Senior Director of Sales at Spirion. So those of you that find yourself interested in the product at the end of this, you'll have a chance or an opportunity to uh, demo the product with Jim. Just so everybody knows throughout this presentation, if you guys have to jump on or off, because I realize it is in the middle of the day, hopefully many of you have jobs that you're working through. You might have phone calls coming in or whatever. Uh, there is a link in this description. Should you decide you'd like to uh, per Spirion, there is a great discount going on. It's 10% off all uh, products, as well as free installation uh, through uh, Spirion. So um, we will work on making this a quick presentation. Uh, I know, again, uh, you guys are, are busy right now, so I'm going to kind of work through uh, the material I have. At the end of this, we're going to end it with a demo that Jim's going to be presenting. And uh, throughout, if you guys have questions, you can post those within the chat and uh, I will, as we get to them, I'll read them out and the appropriate person will kind of answer the questions because I'm sure we're going to have some that, uh, that come up. So feel free to post questions throughout the presentation. All right. So to provide a little bit of an overview, let's cover kind of the dream of a typical junk removal uh, business owner. Uh, if you're watching the JRA channel, especially, you likely share this desire, which is building a business that can truly run without you. So what does that mean? That means calls are being answered by somebody other than you eventually. Uh, jobs are being completed by somebody other than you eventually. But without proper controls, the train is going to fall off the track. So um, what you're going to find if you don't have the proper controls in place, you're going to have jobs aren't going off on time. You're going to have calls are being missed. You've got equipment that's going to uh, get abused, that's going to be wrecked, that's going to just wind up costing you a lot of extra money and repair costs. Uh, money's eventually going to get stolen or tools are going to get stolen. You're going to see bad reviews coming through and, and more. There's a lot of negative things that can occur without proper controls in place. So the one thing you have to keep in mind as you grow and as you build this business, when I first began uh, junk, or junk doctors back 10 years ago, I literally had nothing to my name. So I wasn't all that concerned with protecting myself as, um, uh, you know, we first got started. There was literally nothing to take. What you're going to find is as you put your blood, sweat, tears, money, you know, you, as you invest all that within your company, you're going to want to make sure you're protected because you become more of a target as you get larger. There's more people can take from you uh, as, you're, as you grow your business. So you want to make sure you're covered there. So uh, there are two ways to protect yourself when it comes to your vehicles and vehicles are the number one uh, source of liability with your junk removal company. You have a heavy vehicle driving down the road. Oftentimes you have newer drivers. So most junk removal employees are in their early twenties to, to maybe mid to late at the most, but they're relatively new drivers. Many of them have never driven a vehicle of this size. So uh, going down the road, if you hit somebody, if you wreck somebody, not only do you have a potential damage to your equipment and their vehicle, uh, but if medical and the uh, damage is just completely compound, and we want to make sure we're protected. So you can do that a couple of ways with your vehicles. Number one is through insurance. So everybody. Yep. 
And if you guys have any questions around insurance, you want to make sure you get on the phone with Toby because there is some different types of insurance you want to make sure you have. The next way is you prevent things from occurring. Now, when I say prevent things from occurring, what happens is you have to, you're going to see warning signs uh, that occur along the way. And if you have something set up to actually be able to see those warning signs, and then you follow up and you work on, uh, work, work with the individual that maybe was driving a bit dangerous or whatever, and you correct that, then you help prevent something from ever happening in the future. You can do that via telematics, and then we have got the training and accountability aspect of it that we must make sure uh, that we follow up on. So this, this equipment that we're going to be covering here is going to give you a lot of great information. It's going to actually uh, provide you with uh, examples and issues that might have occurred from drivers when they're driving, but what do you actually do with that information? That's going to be very, very important, and we're going to cover a little bit of how you actually enforce and hold people accountable throughout this presentation. So how do vehicle telematics protect your business? Number one, it's cameras. So everybody talks about or thinks about, hey, it'd be great to have cameras in vehicles. A lot of times people don't take the time to actually get them installed, but there are also different types of cameras. So you've got some camera systems that uh, don't even have a live view. They, uh, they store things with like an SD card that you have to pull to be able to look at. That is, is no good anymore, but they still, people are out there still sell those camera systems. Um, but the cameras are the, the kind of the center point of this entire deal. The next thing, and the thing that a lot of people don't realize are offered through telematics and through certain camera systems is dangerous driving detection alerts. So one of the things these uh, systems are able to actually do is they can sit there and they can tell if one of your drivers is accelerating hard, if they are braking hard, if they're speeding, if they're exhibiting road rage type behaviors, these systems actually have some artificial intelligence in them that allows you to, uh, or, or they actually record these events, they alert the driver of what's going on, and you're able to see what occurred. So if they're sitting there texting, if they fall asleep, you've got a date log, a time log, and you can actually see the event happen, which is pretty amazing. And that's the entire key on how these telematics can really help your business. So how do telematics actually save your money? Well, just think about this. Once you get off the truck, the drivers can pretty much go where they want to go, and they're going to go where they want to go unless you have controls in place to uh, hold them accountable to make sure that they're following the schedule, that they aren't going to uh, gas stations in between every job to take, you know, take a break. That shouldn't be occurring. Uh, we've had... We've, we've come across guys that in between jobs have gone home and they've taken a nap instead of uh, maybe there's a gap instead of putting out yard signs, which you want them to do to drum up more business. They uh, simply went home and of course they stayed clocked in that entire time. Vehicle wear and tear is also one aspect where you can save a tremendous amount of money or a, a sizable amount of money anyway with vehicle telematics. Uh, that hard acceleration, that hard braking, those add up in t over time at hard cornering so hard turning they wear your tires they wear out your brakes they decrease the uh, longevity of your engine and your other components within your vehicle probably most importantly though proper monitoring of the vehicle telematics and enforcement is going to prevent you from having uh, accidents and that's where the vast majority of your expense is going to be and your savings are going to be it's going to one day prevent an accident and we've had a, probably about three accidents in the 12 years we've been open and a couple of them were pretty sizable in a, in uh in damages and i will tell you right now not just the the money we had to pay to fix the vehicle to cover the insurance deductible but also the increased insurance rates which we're about to talk about uh at that time i would have loved to have had some camera systems in place and the system in place to make sure that we're hold, we were hold, properly training and holding our drivers accountable Theft reduction as well. Uh, one of them is time theft. So that almost goes along the lines with the payroll we were talking about before. But the other thing is, is the most common source of theft in a junk removal company in terms of money is uh, a team shows up on site. They record the job within the CRM as a certain amount of money, but they actually tell the customer it's a higher amount. They collect cash from the customer 
and uh, they pocket the difference between what's reported in the CRM and what isn't. When you have a camera system that is not only aiming at the road, but also aiming back into the cab, you'll actually be able to uh, find some of that stuff. And it's not that you're going to necessarily be watching the drivers at every single moment. But what happens is when you start seeing certain numbers in your business, such as average time on job or sales revenue per job, when you start seeing or uh, sales revenue per payroll hour, when you start seeing some of those numbers get high or, you know, or be off, then you start saying, hey, we might have an issue here. Well, that's when you can go back to the cameras. And as part of your investigation to figure out what's going on, you can kind of start putting together the, the pieces and the full picture that would explain why some of these numbers might appear off. So it's definitely a great theft reduction tool. All right, so for insurance, I'm gonna go over to Toby Stubbs because he is the junk removal king when it comes to insurance. And I'm gonna let him cover why insurance, uh, why, why telematics is such an advantage uh, when it comes to your insurance. <clears throat> yeah, thanks Lee. I mean, basically um, when you're shopping out your insurance, most insurance carriers are going to offer an immediate um, discount as a result of you utilizing uh, telematics and cameras systems. So the majority of insurance companies out there will offer anywhere between a five and as high as a 20% uh, discount if you integrate the telematics system to be able to give the insurance underwriter the feedback from um, the uh, different factors like the hard braking and the speeding and, and all of that information. So if you're able to establish that your drivers are um, you know best in class and they're not doing the you know not driving poorly um, as a result of the integration of the telematics, then over time, you're able to directly reduce your immediate insurance costs. The other aspect, not just from a proactive kind of preventative standpoint with the telematics on the insurance piece, is um, the uh, uh, potential to avoid uh, the an at-fault collision um, designation, which will definitely increase your insurance rates. I mean, we see one at fault accident increasing somebody's rates on average between anywhere between 30 to 50% um, or even upwards of that. So if you've got cameras that can actually capture the at fault party in a collision and you're able to prove that to the insurance carrier as a result of having that recorded on a camera, then you're gonna avoid that at fault designation and that accident is then gonna be deemed not at fault where you will not receive an increase in your insurance. So from a reaction standpoint or reactive, uh, not, not only does the camera system and telematics help you reduce your overall costs, but it can really save you in the case where you're, you, you would be found at fault. Um, and, and to give you an idea, if you're, if you're running, you know, three trucks and on average you're paying seven grand a truck. So your total insurance spend is $20,000 for a year, a 30% increase would be a six thousand dollar increase in your overall auto insurance spend it, and it, in addition to that the your loss history doesn't follow you for just one year and then fall off falls off it actually follows you for three uh a minimum of three years and even up to five years with some insurance carriers so when you're looking at the total impact of the difference between an at fault versus non at fault accident, if you have the ability to disprove the being responsible for an accident, it can save you tens of thousands of dollars. You know, six thousand dollar increase over the course of three years is going to ultimately end up costing you eighteen thousand dollars out of pocket for that one at fault accident plus whatever your deductible is. So it's really something to be taken into consideration um, is just having that ability to be able to show to the insurance company, hey, we were not at fault in this 
accident, the driver blew the stop sign or, you know, they merged into our trailer or whatever the case is. Or a lot of times with fraud, you know, with the with people claiming items are falling out of the trucks and then bouncing into their vehicles, um, you've got the ability to avoid all those um, types of claims. You're going to save in the long run for sure. Yeah, and thanks, Toby. And and the uh, having a camera to actually log what really did occur and help you prevent that out fault designation is is excellent and uh, definitely a huge benefit from. My standpoint as an operator, I really look at the fact that we can use this, these, this equipment to properly hold our drivers accountable and properly train our drivers. So hopefully we avoid being in that situation at all. Uh, but those two aspects of it can really, really, really help on insurance. The uh, Bob and Jim and all will get into the uh, demo of, the, of this product a little bit later, but I can tell you it's very affordable. So especially with the uh, deal we've got going on now, which 10% off, and then it's also free installation. I mean, you're talking somewhere between like 55 to 70 75 dollars a month per vehicle depending on what features that you get so um it, it you know it's very very inexpensive so it could cost you eighteen thousand dollars in insurance or by properly utilizing these uh the, the, the telematic system you wind up spending what maybe a couple grand over a three-year time frame so it's uh, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer so thank you but thank you there toby for going over that Okay, so when it comes to actually managing your team, what's really neat about the Fleet Locate program and the artificial intelligence that it has is while you're sitting there and you're driving down the road or whatever, again, it's logging everything that's going on. So it's looking outside your windshield, it's looking back on you inside the vehicle, and it's saying, hey, Lee is, uh, is, re is recording a YouTube video while he's driving down the road, which is something I did yesterday that I probably shouldn't have when we were... Um, uh, announcing this uh, this webinar that somebody talked about, or maybe somebody's texting and driving, or maybe somebody's speeding, or uh, they they're falling asleep at the wheel, or any of the number of things that they're eating. That's another thing. You'd also set, hey, if you don't want them smoking in your vehicle, you can have it sit there and log an event if they're smoking. So, uh, and then also the driving habits in terms of hard turning, acceleration, whatever. It actually takes all those events and it rates each of your drivers and on how they are at driving. And it can give you a comparison. You can set, you can take a look and say over the last week, you know, we have six drivers and Matt was our best driver, but uh, Jim was our worst driver. Just, you know, it, it, or in anywhere in between. You can actually sit there and set up like some sort of a competition or bonus, a gift card, whoever's the best driver over some time frame, maybe gets a $50 gift card. And that provides some positive reinforcement or positive motivation, in addition to saying, hey, if you have a rating below this over this period of time consistently, if you text and drive, or if you do a few of these things often enough, you lose your team lead privilege, or maybe you even lose your job. So that's a little bit of negative reinforcement. So uh, the driver rating aspect of it, the, the AI aspect of it is absolutely phenomenal. Uptime, the one, one of the things that we always talk about is we recommend new vehicles. And people say, well, why do you recommend a new vehicle? You're going to spend $85,000 on a new truck. Uh, or I can go and, you know, I can probably find a used one that has 150,000 miles for maybe 30,000 now. And, there, you know, when you're first getting started, that 30,000 is really, really, really tempting. The problem is, is downtime. Downtime is a, your number one enemy and unpredictability is your number one enemy to having a uh, profitable and predictable source of income with your junk removal company. So we definitely recommend that we have uh, newer vehicles that are being used, that they're well maintained. And as uh, they reach the 150,000 mile mark, so for most junk removal companies, that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five years, you're trading that out. You're getting a new one because you want that predictable revenue stream. You want to understand that, hey, the potential for this vehicle going down is much, much lower when it's new. And hey, if it does go down for at least a good portion of that, at least I know my expense is being covered under uh, under warranty. So uh, one of the neat things that Fleet Locate is able to do is it can actually track uh, the maintenance that's needed on your vehicles. So when this vehicle is driving down the road, Fleet Locate has the ability to track your mileage 
and say and and based on inputs that you provide, it says, hey, we need to change oil every this however many miles. We need to uh, change out our filters however many miles. We need to change out our transmission fluid or um, coolant, whatever, however many miles. And it sends those notifications. Brakes is another really common one. Uh, Brakes is actually probably one of the best ones for this because brakes are easy to forget about until it starts getting metal on metal. And instead of having just to change out some pads, all of a sudden you're putting, uh, you know, you're you're changing out rotors and maybe calipers and and having all kinds of issues where your truck goes down unexpectedly, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that is probably one of the best features. And there's so many, so I keep saying that, but that is a great feature that Fleet Locate has is it's tracking those that mileage and it's going to send you alerts when it's getting time that you need to take your vehicle down for service. Obviously, regular maintenance is helping keep the trucks on the road. It's helping maintain maximum value and it's helping you avoid an unexpected repair, an emergency repair. Whereas uh, when you get ahead of it by having these notifications, you get the repair scheduled and you schedule it at a great time that fits your business not in the middle of the day where you where it's expected to go out and earn a thousand fifteen hundred two thousand dollars in revenue okay so i told you guys we would make that as quick as we can we're i wanted to do it in 20 minutes we did it in 22 so now the fun part though so you guys quit having to listen to me talk about different parts and we actually get to dive into this amazing system and again we've got bob and uh, jim from uh spirion and fleet locate and we're going to turn it over right now. So let's go ahead and do a demo of the product. All righty. So uh, thanks, everybody, for a little bit of time this afternoon. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a brief overview of the Spirion Fleet Locate solution. This is commercial GPS vehicle tracking and dash cams for with complete artificial intelligence and machine vision. And what I like about the system is typically we're going to install the tracking device. We call it the FL360. That's the newest generation tracking device that we have. We're going to install that hidden up underneath the dash. It's totally out of sight. and Nobody can see it. We also have uh, devices designed to track trailers uh, and heavy equipment. And basically that is a device that's totally weatherproof. It can be out in the rain and the salt and the snow and the mud. And the key thing here is I can have any combination of trailers, heavy equipment, trucks, all inside the same user interface, right? So what I want to point out here, first of all, is on the live map, this is an enterprise seat license. And what that means is as many employees that you want can have access to the system and you can specify what things they have visibility into and what things they can't see, what things they can't edit. And what happens is every 30 seconds you see up here in the top corner of the screen, it's asking for a refresh. Now, the GPS device on our most popular platform is going to update every two minutes. So every two minutes, it's updating position. And then what's going to happen is the vehicle is going to be in one of three different colors. If a vehicle is in green, it's driving. Yellow is idling. Red is shut off. What I like about this system, everything is typically one or two clicks away. So for example, maybe I want to know, hey, who's driving right now? So I can click that button. Everybody else just left the map and I can see I got some vehicles in Georgia and South Carolina that are driving right now. Click the button again, everybody comes back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open the list of vehicles here and I can scroll through the list and I can take a look at vehicles and see exactly what's going on. So what I want to point out is I'm going to click on my truck. My truck actually has uh, a couple of different devices in it from our uh, from our from our solution, and I'm going to switch to a satellite view, and you can see that obviously my vehicle is parked in my driveway right now. Here's a car in the driveway next door. Here's a car in the driveway over there. There's my kid's car parked next to the house. But what it's going to show me is exactly what these vehicles are up to, right? So if I want to take a look at what that vehicle did, maybe from a graphical perspective of what happened today, yesterday, last week, I'm going to share with you exactly what that vehicle did from a really quick snapshot of a graphical timeline. And what it's going to do is it's going to populate what some people call the breadcrumb trail. And what you're going to see here is the uh, my vehicle drove from up here on the northeast side of Atlanta. And I drove into downtown Atlanta because I actually uh, had dinner down there. But you can see each of these are those two minute pings going up and down the freeway. Right. So I can see that graphical view or I can actually see more details of each ignition sequence. So let's take a peek at my wife's car right now and we're going to click on her car and I can see that she is now driving right now. 
and I want to switch to a satellite view. It looks like she's driving eastbound on Hammond Road, right? And I can see she's been driving for eight minutes. Now, what I also like about this is I can go to a Google street level view as well, and I can show you a street level view of where that vehicle is located right now. So that's a street level view of where she is. I can also, of course, go to that satellite view and share with you exactly where that vehicle is located, right? And if I want to look at the trip history on that, I'm going to see on this map a couple of key things. What you're going to see, first of all, is uh, any ignition sequence uh, that uh, ends with ignition off is going to change color here. So I'm going to turn off my geofence indicators here for a second. And you're going to see purple icons, red icons, pink. These are all different ignition sequences. So I can see the exact path that vehicle took. And I can zoom in as close as you want, and I can share with you exactly where that vehicle was at, right? So something else that I like about the system, again, everything is typically one or two clicks away. So if I wanna say, hey, look, take these purple things off the map, those are my geofences. A geofence is an invisible boundary of any size or shape that you wanna make. And what's nice about that is they can identify uh, locations of where they're at. So if I go to my vehicle, it says my vehicle is parked at Jim's cul-de-sac. And the reason it knows that is I've got this invisible geofence that surrounds the boundary that I call Jim's cul-de-sac, right? And again, I can have as many of these on the map as you want. It's just used for identifying where vehicles or assets are operating or parked. So if I zoom in here, you're going to see a couple different geofences populate here on the map. And you'll see if I go to satellite view, you'll see why I made those geofences that shape. Gas station a grocery store, the Goodyear Tire Place, and so on. So, so I like the fact that everything here is continually updating here in real time, and everything is going to keep updating of exactly what's happening here, right? So that's a little bit on the live map. And what I want to share with you next is a little bit on the driver behavior scorecard, because what I like about this is the system is going to quickly rank just what Lee was talking about to rank those employees that drive from first to worst, or I can flip it and show worst to first of exactly what's going on. These scores are kind of like back in school. So 90 to 100 would be an A, 80s are a B, 70s are a C, and so on. So let's look at my wife's car. She's got a 76. That's about a C, right? But the reason is she's had some speeding events. And what I want to point out here is when we do an implementation, we're going to sign a CAM, a customer account manager. They're going to train you. They're going to do all the system setup for you, and they're going to show you exactly how the system operates. So what I like about this is I can modify this score based on what's important to me. So you'll see there's 11 different settings here inside the system. And the higher that I make the setting, the more that activity is going to debit from their from their driver score. So 90 plus miles an hour, that's really important. Let's let's crank up 80, 80 to 89 miles an hour. Let's do the same thing for cranking over the speed limit. Here's your G-force things, hard on the gas, hard on the brakes. I'm going to update a couple of those. We're going to go back and take a look at my wife's car. She had a 76. Now it's going to recalculate the score. Now she's got a 56. So again, you can custom tailor exactly how that score is calculated. And then what, again, back to what Lee was talking about, we recommend using the carrot approach. You want to offer the positive incentive, not the big stick approach. You want to pound people for saying, hey, how bad their score is. Like, I don't want to single out Bobby for having this really lousy score, right? And I like the fact that all that's going to automatically calculate in real time. And you can run scores daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you want to take a look at, right? Now, also... There's a service and maintenance component. This is all built in standard. And you're going to see there's a number eight up here. Now, what does that mean? It's telling me I have eight assets that are now due for service because I said I want this PM service based upon this amount of miles accrued or this amount of calendar days accrued, whichever comes first. So I can see this Honda right here says it's two days overdue because I said, tell me whichever comes first, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I'm the fleet manager and I'm going to say, hey, that was a tire rotate. Now, maybe I'm taking care of the service, but I actually, uh, I'm recording it now, but maybe I took care of this a couple days ago. Hey, I did it back on Monday. I can override and type in what the odometer reading was off the service ticket. I can plug in what the cost was. I'm going to type in, uh, I'm going to type in uh, rotate and balance on these notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this. But before I save it, remember, there's a number eight up here in the top corner. When I save this and I go back to that tab, that number eight is going to change into a seven. And now I have seven assets now that are listed that still need service. And what's nice about this is I'm going to save permanent records of every single thing that I've done, cradle to grave, for everything I've done to that vehicle, right? So I like the fact that it's going to automatically remind you 
based upon calendar time or mileage accrued, right? So that's also built into the system. I also like the fact that there are live alerts here in the system and live alerts are designed to tell you in real time when certain things happen that you wanna know about right now. So for example, they're abusing the truck, hard on the gas or the brakes, or maybe if the asset is moving when it shouldn't, like the middle of the night. If they're over the posted speed limit by how much, you can say, hey, I'll give you five, but if you're six over, send me a text, right? Speed threshold is a high watermark. I never want them breaking 80. Unauthorized movement is a towing alert. And what I want to point out, what I really like is any one of these alerts can be set 24-7, or I can set around a time frame. So I recommend we always set this alert that says if one of my assets is towed between 10 at night and 5 in the morning, it's probably being stolen. And I want to know about that right now, right? I can also tell you if they enter or exit a geofence, but maybe more specifically around time zones. So uh, as Lee had mentioned, hey, you don't want your guy going home and taking a nap. I can alert you and say, hey, if your guy Jim drove to Jim's house during business hours, I'm going to send an alert. I'm going to tell you about that, right? And then I can also tell you if somebody tries to tamper with a device, it's totally hidden. So that's a pretty malicious uh, scenario, but I'm still going to tell you if they did that. And then finally, I can also tell you if the battery is getting low in the truck before the battery actually goes dead. So let's look at an alert here. This is a speeding of at least 15 over the limit. I can see this vehicle hit 82 and a 65. So again, hit one or multiple people via text or via email, or I can populate it to this alerts queue. All this is built in. Now there's a whole suite of reports that'll show you where they were, where they uh, where they went to, how long they're stopped, how long they're driving, all that's built into the system. But I wanna transition over to the dash cam. This is my favorite part of the system. The dash cam has the inward facing lens into the cab of the vehicle. It also has an outward facing lens uh, out through the windshield. And the way the camera works is it doesn't come on with ignition. The camera comes on based upon any kind of vibration or impact or movement of the vehicle. So as soon as the vehicle starts moving, camera's on. Camera's now recording through both lenses. And there's artificial intelligence that's, odd, that's always watching and you can determine what things are important to you and what things you want to know about. Like, are they using the handheld device? Is it up to their head? Are they texting? Is it in front of them? Are they trying to hide it down here in their lap? Are they driving with other seatbelt? Are they smoking? Are they eating or drinking or distracted with whatever, right? So I want to share with you where what this looks like in my truck. I've actually got this camera installed just below the rear view mirror. And what I like about this is you can't fold down a sun visor to block that rear lens, right? So what's going to happen is it's automatically going to populate to this dashboard what the camera is seeing. And what I like about this is I don't have to go look for data. It tells me, hey, you've had five cell phone use events today. So I'm going to click on that those five videos automatically loaded right here on the right. So I'm gonna click on that. And what I'm gonna share with you is there's a guy holding the cell phone. There's the video through the front. There's the video in the back. This video might look a little bit jumpy on the screen share, but it's a very, very smooth uh, video that's playing back, right? Now I'm gonna share with you a couple other examples, right? So I'm gonna open up a video. This is a vehicle that's being driven up in uh, Detroit. And about three o'clock in the morning, this guy dropped his phone. And then he's holding on the wheel to lean over to pick up his phone and he tugged on the wheel so it started veering to the left luckily this is at three in the morning see he's going to hit a curb and what happened is he just busted off the lower valence of the car he blew out the left front tire and bent the rim right so i'm going to share with you exactly what happened there's no mystery damage right now this video is of a collision and you're going to see what happens right so this guy runs into the side of this car. I'm going to pause this for a second. I want to point out this is 7.54 in the morning, and there's actually, uh, there's a, the sun is cranking in, and I can share with you what happened on the inside because this guy was cleaning the windshield of this truck. And what I want to point out here is this guy doesn't smoke, but this company's policy is no smoking inside the vehicle. Well, the artificial intelligence identified the guy that runs the other shift was identified 52 times for smoking inside the vehicle. So this guy just got done wiping off the windshield because that sun is cranking and it's really hard to see. He can't see that car that's about to turn into the park a lot. So now you see he just ran into that. So I've got the video inside. I also have the video uh, looking forward of what happened, right? So now here's a guy, 83 miles an hour. Look at this guy. His eyes are on his phone more than he's looking out front. That is terrifying to me, right? And the key is, don't have to look for it. It's going to automatically bring that to you, right? So here's a guy, his whole head moves down when he's looking off, the, looking on his phone. This just 
just just scares me to no end, right? Now, some people say, hey, I want to make sure they can drink from a bottle of water, but I don't want you eating. Watch this guy. One hand's holding a plate of food. The other one's got hot sauce. No hands. Oh, let's correct the steering, right? No hands on the wheel. So again, you can determine what's important and what things you want to know about. Now, here's me, and I'm going to pick up my phone. You're probably not going to hear the alert. But the thing is, this camera has the ability to automatically alert the driver for in the moment correction, right? So if you want to alert the guy instantly so we can change that behavior, the camera has that ability as well. And the camera can also record audio with the video as well. Lots of different things that we can do. And then you're going to see uh, two last videos here. This kid is spending more time texting with whomever than he is driving. He's in a Ford F-550, right? And then finally, this is a vehicle being stolen. The ignition's not on, but again, the camera wakes up with movement, right? So I can see exactly what that vehicle did. The GPS device is reporting and the camera's recording the entire path, right? And then last one here, look at the stop sign. He's doing 23 miles an hour. He went right through that stop sign. And the key here is this guy has a very recognizable logo on his shirt. I don't want to show you the driver because it's a pretty it's pretty bad. But the bottom line is I can see exactly what's going on, right? Now, if I go back to the main screen, you're going to see some cameras are in green, some cameras are in yellow. This system will let you actually view live what that camera sees if that vehicle is being driven and the camera is on. So I just sent a request down to Adam's camera. He's down outside of Houston. And I asked the system to go ahead and stream the video off his camera. And he might have just parked. So I'm going to try one more. Let's go to let's go to this vehicle over in uh, in San Diego. And we're going to take a look at this. Now, this is going to run as fast or slow as your Internet allows. I know I'm on a screen share, so it's probably slowing down my Internet connection. But I'm going to give this a couple seconds. Typically, this is going to come up within about one or uh, one or two seconds. And it's going to start playing that video. And it looks like my Internet is too slow right now because I'm doing a video screen share uh, with this as well. But the key here is don't have to go look for it. I can easily see exactly what's going on. And there's all my different metrics. One last thing I'm going to do. Let's just say, let's show me the data for the last seven days. But I just want to know about this truck right here. If I click on that truck, these are all the infractions that that vehicle had. Some tailgating events, cell phone use, et cetera, et cetera. You want to see the cell phone use? Let's take a look. And you're going to see that was me and the camera's on infrared because it was a low light condition. But you can see exactly what was going on. So that's a run through on the system. I didn't want to burn up all the time today because I wanted to leave some time for questions. And I want to make sure if anybody's got questions to definitely post those into the chat. So I want to turn it over uh, next to uh, Bob just to give you guys a quick uh, update uh, from Spirion from a corporate nature. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, some of those videos are <laughs> hard to watch, especially as, a, as an entrepreneur and business owner. You never know what happens behind the wheel till you actually see it. But like Jim said, um, we're committed to our relationship with JRA. Uh, we believe that we can provide a solution to help them and, and, their, and, their, and their clients. Um, so we're, you know, we're putting this program together. Uh, we're offering a significant discount uh, because we do believe it, it does save lives. It helps businesses uh, operate more efficient and uh, gives you that visibility, peace of mind, because the one thing you definitely want to avoid is those nuclear verdicts, right? Now you have the information ahead of you that can help you get out ahead and, and make sure that you're making smart and, and uh, intelligent business decisions. So we're excited about our relationship. I'll turn it back over, Lee. Um, again, just click on the, um, uh, on the link at the end and uh, we'll, we'll send you some more information and get some more information in front of you. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Sounds good. Yeah, the, the link's in the description of the video where uh, you can take advantage of free installation. There's no equipment cost also. I don't think I mentioned that before. Uh, there's no equipment cost in this case. It's 10% off free installation. They'll actually come to you, which is really nice. You don't have to take the vehicle somewhere. They'll actually show up at your location. We just had a few more trucks uh, where these things were installed on just uh, just last week, and it's super, super convenient. It doesn't take long to do. Um, I do have a couple notes. Jim uh, did a great job. We wanted to keep the demo kind of short. There are a few things that I'd like to mention. Um, we do have some questions and comments to cover as well. The reports, all the reports you can program to have sent uh, to you on a regular schedule, correct, Jim? Yeah, so great question. So all the reports, there's basically two dozen of them in the system. Any report can be run live to say, hey, show it to me right now, or I can schedule that report to be waiting in my email inbox when I come in in the morning. So for us business owners, one of the things that we love, and, and especially as, as your company gets larger and everything, you have more people, 
bring, just send me the stuff. That way I, we can just take a look at it. We have it right in front of us. And this system will automatically send you over the relevant information based upon uh, what you tell it to do. So that I think that's an important note as you guys start having more and more vehicles. And uh, drivers, we all know, unlike some service businesses, junk removal, uh, companies tend to have drivers that switch vehicles back and forth. Most, uh, most drivers are only working three, four days out of the week uh, because they work such long shifts. So you're going to have somebody in truck two one day and somebody in truck two the other day. So there's a couple different ways that it can actually tell who's driving that vehicle. One is through, uh, depending on which, uh, uh, which system you get, one is through your phone and then one is like a key fob system. And Jim, if you want to provide a little bit more information on that, I think that would be great as well. Yeah, great comment, Lee. So uh, there's actually three different ways that I can register a employee to the vehicle so I can track metrics by driver independently of how many vehicles that they drive for you. The first one is through the web user interface. I can say, hey, Jim's driving that vehicle today. I can assign them. But some people say, hey, I want to put that on the employee. So uh, there is an option uh, that we can include called the driver scorecard mobile app. And the way that mobile app works is the, the, the employee can use their iPhone or the Android phone. They can open up the app. They can say, hey, I'm driving truck number seven today. And that's going to sign them uh, to that vehicle, right? And that's going to sign them to that vehicle until somebody changes that via a mobile app or through the web user interface. The third option is we have a driver ID key fob system, and it's basically an RFID key fob that basically is assigned to each employee. So for that option, we would install a key fob reader on the dash. And what happens is every time you start the ignition in that vehicle, you have to touch the key fob to the reader. That's gonna say, hey, that's now Jim that's assigned to that vehicle, right? And that puts the onus on the driver every single time when that ignition starts, you have to touch the key fob to that reader. If you don't, it's gonna be buzzing and beeping at them because it's designed to annoy the driver so they fob in so we know always who that driver is and that's why the system can give you driver-based metrics independently of how many vehicles they drive for you yeah that's an uh, excellent information there we prefer and kind of recommend the key fob system i realize some of the other systems uh you might a lot of companies will use the nice thing with the key fob though is it gives that audible alert and alarm so if they don't go ahead and uh and and swipe that that key fob where it can track who's driving then it's going to be pretty miserable for them to drive that vehicle at that point. So that's uh, that's kind of the dummy proof way of making sure everybody does what they need to. Um, I will say I mentioned free equipment. I'm, I'm actually not sure that the key fob part is included in that. So that'll be up to Jim and Bob to tell you if you're talking with them. But I definitely I'm sure it's not very expensive uh, if it's not included in that. OK, so let's take a look at a couple questions here. Uh, or we'll start out with some comments early on. Uh, Logan Carnes learning a ton already. Lee, can't thank you enough. Appreciate you watching. It is an excellent system and um, you know, we've got a lot of great information coming out. So thanks for watching there. The, let's see, we've got Charles Hosh did have a comment and um, let's see, we'll do this, uh, Bob, why don't you take this one? Assuming we would receive a discount for having a camera system in telematics. Uh, so he, he is assuming we would have a discount for a camera system in telematics. So using them both, uh, would the discount be automatic or would we need to build up a historical uh, reference of data to present to the insurance companies. This it might actually be a Toby question yep. in terms of uh, receiving a discount on your insurance. Yeah, so the answer here is it depends on the carrier. Um, a lot of the carriers have uh, programs where you can enroll and then they'll um, advise you of when the data needs to be shared. And maybe it's on a quarterly basis or you know, a semi-annual basis, or maybe they just renew it once, review it once a year at renewal when they're um, underwriting and repricing your account. So it really depends on the carrier um, and, and what their um, specific uh, setup allows for. So we've seen it both ways where they sign you up directly and then the, the telematics company relates the information over to the insurance carrier. And then we've also seen it where um, you as a client provide that to um, your agent or broker or the carrier directly. Excellent answer. And, and you know, one of the easiest ways to deal with that is, um, you know, to work with Toby over at Wisdom. And he is the only insurance national provider of insurance that I'm aware of that understands the junk removal business. He specializes in it. And, uh, you know, normally if you go to a local agent and they have no idea 
what a junk, how to classify a junk removal company. He's going to know right where to go and, and generally he's going to be able to find you pretty good rates. And when you become eligible for a better insurance, he's always kind of have has his nose and his eyes out trying to find uh, insurance carriers that are going to provide a better rate. So I highly recommend you check out uh, Toby with Wisdom Insurance Agency as well. Uh, Matt, let's make sure we get a link over to Wisdom within the uh, description of this video too. All right. So we have another question. This one's from Sean Purdy. Sean, do you have cameras that are 360 degrees or at least have cameras that are back facing? Jim, you want to take this one? Yeah. So, uh, so our camera itself, uh, basically it's an all in one unit. So I've got forward facing and this is a wide angle lens. And then the camera has actually two rear facing lenses. One is an infrared lens. One's a high definition color. This is also a wide angle lens, but this is actually the camera hardware. So I can see out through, uh, the passenger and driver's side windows, but currently today, I don't have a rear camera for the back of the truck. This is designed to show what's going on in front and into the cab of the vehicle. Those uh, cameras out the back, we have, you know, with us building junk removal trucks, we have experimented with a reliable way to do a uh, backup camera on a dump truck when you're going in landfill environments and CND environments and all that kind of stuff. It's been rather difficult. So what we found is a lot of times they wind up getting knocked off over a period of time anyway, and you're constantly having to replace them. Um, you know, most truck removal companies, uh, generally, if the truck's rolling down the road, you've got two people, the navigator needs to get out if you're in reverse and sit there and, um, you know, motion you back. I guess going down the road, you don't have the advantage of seeing, you know, what's going on behind you. But if somebody slams into you going down the road, it's generally fairly obvious. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see another comment from Logan. While this is nuts, definitely a must have. I agree. It's like, you know, in my mind, it's a no brainer um, for the amount it costs. And the benefits it provides, uh, I think it's, uh, like you said, it's a, it's a must have. Hey, All right, so we have another question here from uh, Jordan Thomas. Jordan, does this system require, by the way, Jordan's in Atlanta, so he's close to, I think, Jim, you're in Atlanta. He's pretty close to you. Uh, does this system require that you have the vehicle on in order to retrieve video, or can the vehicle be off and you still view the vehicle footage? Jim? Yeah, so great question. So what I like about the camera is, the camera is installed with a connection to constant power and ground. So the bottom line is once the camera is installed, you never have to touch it. So I can actually click on my camera right now and I can actually download video from that, even though I'm sitting in my office and I'm not in the truck. So the truck can be turned off and you can still access the camera footage. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you there, Jim. Guys, if you have any other questions, please feel free to post them in the um, uh, in the chat right now. So we've got a little bit more time for some more questions if some uh, some kind of come through. In the meantime, make sure that you uh, click on the link and get signed up for a little bit of a further demo with Fleet Locate and Spirion. Great provider of systems. They've been in business for a long time now, and they have customers all across the country. So I'm sure you guys are going to be very, very satisfied with the product. I know we are. And, uh, you know, the, the, the benefits are just uh, like we talked about earlier, it's just absolutely a no-brainer. So it looks like we have one more question coming in, so we'll wait for that to come uh, come through. Uh, Bob, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, you know? yeah. One more thing I want to add. I know we talked about the benefits of the solution, and one thing that we can touch on that I think either would be beneficial now or down the road would be fuel cards. Um, you know, Jim, you know, that there might be customers or, or people that are looking to or give out fuel cards or reimburse their drivers for fuel there's a way that we can help with that to prevent theft, uh, have more accountability. Do you want to just dig into that while we're waiting for that last question to come through? Yeah, so fuel card integration is an option. It's a pretty popular. And the way fuel card integration works is, again, we, we partner with the big fuel card companies like Wex, Red Express, Fleet Corps, uh, Fuel Man, and so on. And the way it works is the fuel card does have to be assigned to the vehicle. So if I work for you, that fuel card is going to be in truck number two. If I switch to truck three, I'm going to use the fuel card in truck three. So what happens is when we do fuel card integration, all the fuel card transactional data populates into your Spirit account at midnight, and it's going to populate the reports that you want to see. So it's going to show reports of how, how many Phillips, what you paid per gallon, cost of the Phillips, miles per gallon, all that stuff. But what I like is it's going to show you what I call our fraud reports. So for example, it's going to show you, hey, you know what? Here's one scenario yesterday where your fuel card was used but your truck wasn't there. 
or here's a scenario where that cart has bought more fuel than a tank can hold because I've seen times where people are filling up their buddy's car at the same time. Who's going to know, right? And I want to share with you one other scenario about this because this is a big one. Uh, I did an installation for a customer in Birmingham, Alabama, and I was sitting with the president of the company as VPs, and I was asking about fuel carts. He goes, wait a minute. And he points to his CFO. He says, we asked our CFO to run an audit of our fuel cards because what happened is like two months prior. And he said, we had an employee. It was about eight months ago. We terminated this employee. Well, somebody forgot to turn off the fuel card this guy had access to. And he said, we found out that since the date that guy was terminated, his fuel card purchased more than $30,000 in fuel. And this guy standing at the gas station, go, hey, buddy, come on up here, 20 bucks cash. Hey, I'm going to fill up your car, right? Next guy. And that money's gone, right? So I said, would you want to know the first time your card was used and your truck wasn't there? And he said, what? And I showed him the report and he says, we should have had this eight months ago. We could have saved 30 grand. And I've had people say, yeah, I got burned for 12 grand this year. So it unfortunately happens sometimes, but this gives clarity before it becomes $30,000. Great. Yeah, that's a, that's a major, major point is you have more and more vehicles and more and more drivers. Fuel theft becomes a, uh, a major issue that you have to keep track of. All right, so next question from Seven Hills, Holloway, and Jump Removal. When using a landfill, is speed recorded by GPS or wheel, wheel speed through the truck CPU? I'm assuming he's wondering about this because in a landfill environment, if you're spinning your tires, it might report a higher speed. I think it's from GPS. Is that correct, Jim? Yeah, so on our most popular configuration, which is called uh, Fleet Locate Standard Platform, it's actually measuring uh, GPS speed. Uh, by satellite, not by not by the tire spinning. Uh, also on the camera, there's an option I can turn on that's going to uh, put a date and time stamp and uh, the speed on the bottom of that video as well. So you'll see what the speed is on the video. You also see the speed as recorded from GPS and satellites. Okay, excellent. And it looks like that's the last uh, last question we've got. I do see actually maybe one more coming through. Right now, nope. So no, no more questions. We really appreciate all of you guys for joining, uh, Toby, Jim, and uh, Bob, as well as myself, on this demo of uh, Fleet Locate by Spirion. Uh, excellent vehicle telematics and camera system. I would call it a no-brainer to have in all of your vehicles. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, right now, again, through uh, this new deal, if you attended this webinar and you click on the link in this description, we have no equipment cost except for possibly the key fob, but pretty much no equipment cost, 10% off and free installation, uh, 10% off the total cost, monthly cost of the uh, uh, product, as well as free installation. Again, they will come to you. And our experience with, you know, has been with them that when we schedule an install, it's generally like within a few days, they're out. It doesn't take long to install them. And then you're up and running. Uh, so any final words uh, from, from you, Jim, on, or Jim or Bob? Yeah, I do have one additional note. I just did an installation for a uh, junk removal company. And one of the things the uh, the owner said was, is there some way I can have that front lens looking out record a little bit longer after they pull in to this? Uh, maybe I'm, I went to Mrs. Jones's house to pull out all the stuff. So the thing is, this camera is going to keep recording through both lenses until the vehicle stops, plus the default time that you can change. The default time is 10 minutes, but I can tell the camera to record for 60 full minutes after that vehicle stops. So I've had scenarios where they want to record a little bit longer when that vehicle pulls into the driveway or the parking lot to show, hey, I didn't bump into your vehicle that's over there, or I didn't hit this or hit that. And I can even show proof of what the guys are doing moving around the front of the vehicle. So that capability is easy to adjust. And again, that is all done uh, through the web user interface. And that's also done with the help of uh, a dedicated assigned customer account manager that's assigned to do all your training, onboarding, and configurations in your account. Excellent. Very good. Uh, I guess we do have one more question. Jordan, again, how are the fuel levels tracked in the vehicles, Jim? So uh, the way the system works is we have uh, Fleet Locate on the standard platform. We also have the advanced platform. The advanced platform is going to connect to the vehicle's ECU, to the, to the OBD2 or the 9-pin or whatever connector the vehicle has. And contingent upon what the vehicle ECU can report, I can see it. So if the vehicle can report fuel tank levels, I can show you what the fuel tank levels are live in real time. I can also show it to you in the breadcrumb trail. So if I pulled up my vehicle, you can see my fuel tank went from 11% to 10% to 9%. So if the vehicle ECU can report it, I can see it. If I'm on the advanced platform, I can read that in information. But also, when you're doing Phillips, of course, you're going to see with your fuel card, it's going to tell you exactly how many gallons are purchased. So you're going to know that you got a fuel, a full tank when they filled up at whatever X date and time. 
Excellent. Sounds good. All right, everybody. So we really appreciate you joining in for this uh, for this webinar. Hope you guys enjoy the uh, product. If you have any questions at all, uh, Jim is, I think, probably going to be the one that maybe demos it for you. Could be. Uh, we've also got Brandon over there is excellent. So somebody from that team is going to be uh, meeting with you to kind of demo the product, figure out what works best for you. I know you'll be satisfied with it. So uh, and for now, I uh, appreciate you tuning in and we'll see everybody here soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Lee.